Hi everyone, Miranda Patron back here with you guys to do another stone. And this lovely stone is a Santorini stone sold by Kep Couriers on Amazon. Um, I love the sparkle and the shine in these white stones. The only thing I find difficult with these is I don't want to cover it with a background because I love the sparkle and shine that you get on these stones. And I don't want to put a black background on that to cover it. I want to keep as much of the stone showing as possible. So I think today we're just going to do a fun little flower here. And then maybe a stem or a leaf, just a leaf, I'm thinking maybe. Because spring's here and it's a lovely time where it's green and colorful and everything's blossoming and smells nice after the rains. So I'm going to be using the deco art paints as usual. I'm going to mix it up a little bit here though because I have a color challenge in one of the groups on Facebook that I'm participating in and they have a specific palette that they've chosen. And I just want to show you here. There's a Sherbert, orange Sherbert. I'll just move this out of the way. We'll do it that way. The orange Sherbert. And that's a multi-surface surface. A royal fuchsia. Chris blue. There's another multi-surface that I chose, which is the chick. Little chick. And then we also have Desert Turquoise. So those are going to be the colors I'm using today. Um, the colors in the challenge, they just put out a palette so that you just see the block. So you can use any of your own colors that are similar for the challenge. But for this video, these are the colors I'll be using. And I've had a lot more requests again about using the dotting tools. So I will go with the dotting tools again today and we'll use those to create our flower on this stone. Okay. Now if you're working on something that's perfectly round or perfectly square then you can measure and have guidelines as to where your center is. But one of the things I like about the natural stones is it's arbitrary where you put it. I just kind of like to eyeball it and decide where I'm going to want my center to be for the start of my flower mandala. And I'm going to go with the chick, the multi-surface yellow. It's a nice, light, gentle yellow. I really enjoy this color. And I'm going to go with the biggest dotting tool that I have here. And I have I want the circle a little bit bigger than my tool allows for. Like if I were just to plunk a dot down on there, it would be smaller than this. So I have a considerable amount of paint on the tool that I load it and you're just going to push it around into a circle like this. Make sure that your paint is decently fluid. See how it's kind of liquidy? It makes it easier to push around rather than using the full body paints. Um, but if you get the full body paints, you can always mix those with a flow medium, uh, like Floetrol or the things that people use for acrylic pouring, and that will thin out your paint for you. And DecoArt now has a pouring medium as, as well. So you can mix those with your paint to thin them out so that they're more fluid for you. So there's our center. And then next I'm just going to take another one of the smaller dotting tools and I'm going to make use of the extra paint I have in the center. We're going to put some smaller dots here in the shape of a plus sign. And then I'm going to go on an angle in between those dots. add a few more. And that's the base of your... Alright, next I'm going to go with the orange sherbet. And these dots are going to go in between 
the yellows that we already put down. Okay, I'm gonna go with a little bit of a larger tool and go back to the yellow. I'm gonna go in between the orange that we just used, the orange sherbet. And there's the chick. Okay, so now we're going to go to that royal fuchsia. I'm going to go with the smallest dotting tool I have here. And let's see, I think we're going to do kind of a long swipe in and you want them to all be kind of the same length so if you want to do a guideline you could take a compass and put the compass out as far as you would like and then you'll have a guideline to start from each time you're doing your swipe from out to in um, I'm just gonna eyeball it here with the small tool I think this will give us enough paint to drag it into that orange dot there just like that. And you'll get a feel for how much paint you need on your tool for doing a swipe. Um, just practice on a piece of cardstock or paper or something like that until you can kind of get a feel for how much you need and what length it will go. And it's, I want it to be kind of free-flowing, I guess is the word I want, the design. So I don't, I don't mind that it's not perfect. I want it to kind of look like a flower, but also just flow like you just created it. Not perfect, just take a breath, enjoy how relaxing it is to have some time to paint. <laughs> Nobody's pulling at me. Nobody's yelling mommy. I probably just jinxed myself, but no, that's okay. <laughs> and if you don't have enough on your tool, you can just go back to where it had run out and just kind of grab a little bit of paint and drag it out the rest of the way. So we have a fun little design starting here for our flower. Okay, I think I'm going to go back to the orange here for a second. And right at the top of each of these swipes, I'm just going to do a little tiny one on either side like that. Just a little, little drag.
then I'm going to go back to the pink after. And do a couple more below it. Below the orange one that we just did. So I start, I drop this off here because I felt like I had too much paint on the tool. And like I said, you'll get used to how much you need for what you want to do. Okay, now back to the pink. Like I said, I'm not measuring anything. I'm just kind of gauging how long I want it drawn out. Less paint if I want it shorter. promise they won't all be perfectly the same length all the way around if you check <laughs> anybody's measuring and that's okay breathe while you do it and then you have a good little design here going this design also can work when you're trying to do snowflakes for the winter as well or if you want to do a sunset sunburst these work with that as well a lot of times when you're just kind of freehanding a design you'll get to points where you're like well now what can I do with this so just stop and take a minute and you can think about all the possibilities so I could put big dots up here and work with that afterwards. We could put larger dots in here in between the petals that we just created. You could skip around, do an entire dot around, dots, sorry, entire ring around of dots. So that's another possibility. You could change it up completely and do some other little shapes like diamonds or if you wanted to do hearts in here. There's hundreds of, and hundreds of possibilities, so don't feel like you're stuck, and feel free to ask. I know a lot of people in the groups just say, hey, I'm stuck at this part in my design. Do you guys have any ideas? And people are more than willing to help, so that's another good way to find a different direction to go in. So that's what's going on in my head right now as well as I'm just thinking which direction do I want to go with that. I think I'm going to go larger dots in between these. Um... I'm debating it here for a second. So I try to think out loud so you guys can kind of understand parts of how the de design process works um, when you're just freehanding it rather than having a stencil or having a plan in mind. Sometimes you can have a basic plan in mind and then nothing goes according to plan. So, Or it might just have a color scheme in mind, um, which is what we had with this, with our palette. So... so also, don't feel like you are stuck in a design pattern forever. You know, this time, I think I'm going to go with a large turquoise dot here. Next time, you can start your design the same way and then go a totally different direction and create a different mandala. So it's kind of like the kaleidoscopes, you know, when you're kids and you have the telescope type thing where you twist at the end and the colors change and the shapes change as they shake around. So 
each time you can do it different so don't feel like you're stuck <laughs> with a design just because you chose it that one time and some of them can be fun to repeat but I am going to go with the desert turquoise I think like this with the larger stones I mean the larger dots My brain is going in a million different directions today. Apologize. My oldest daughter already had college orientation. She's only 15. Mm -hmm. She's doing college classes next year. And she also has prom this evening. So we have quite a bit going on. But I actually got the baby down for a nap. So I thought I would meet with you all and paint a nice little stone here. Because these Santorini stones are always calling to me. <laughs> I love the little flecks of shine. I, th I think it's like a mica in it. It's really pretty. But also leaving negative space like this allows for the stone to shine through as well. Okay, I think while this, these dots are wet, I'm going to steal some from the centers and go around like this. So you can see what I'm doing because I have my angled tool here. It also allows me to see what I'm doing, which makes my life a lot easier, especially once you start getting really tiny with dots much easier to see where you're placing them with the angle tools and that's just my opinion many people use other types of tools I really like the angled paint brushes that I use as well I'll grab one here so you can see what you're doing and it's really just personal preference people are able to do amazing work with um, punch sets drills somebody sent me these crystal rods to try and you know they do they make dots differently a little bit but they still make dots so it's all in what you're used to I've even finger painted a little today it looks like here <laughs> can't get the black off my fingers I was prepping some faces for canvases and a couple wood coasters and magnets and all you have the black out you might as well do them all right So I'm just stealing this while the paint is wet in the center here. And a lot of times in the videos I will pause it if I'm doing tight rings in different colors. I will pause the video just so you all know. Because um, I like them to dry a little bit so they don't bleed into one another. But you don't really know sometimes if, it, if I start and pick back up where I left off even though I paused it. But I'm not doing that with these. The center is wet. These are wet and you can see I'm just doing two rows of the desert turquoise. And the darker colors really show up nicely on the white stone too. I was always hesitant to do a white background. My paints never got great coverage, so when I found white stones on the beach, I was like, well, I'll try back white background, and it's the darker colors, really. The, the contrast is just beautiful. I don't feel like when I use a white background, though, that on a, a white painted background, I don't feel like it has the same effect. But that just might be in my mind. Maybe I'm not using good whites. <laughs> Alright, so as I'm working my way around here, I can hopefully talk and 
paint at the same time more here on a different topic I just really want to thank you all you know I was really going there for a while with a lot of videos and really hitting all the groups and being very active online um, but I really appreciate the support you guys all gave me when I was saying how I had to pull out a little bit and family first and we have a lot going on and you know it's really encouraging to have such a wonderful art community to be a part of and you guys really comment from the heart I appreciate it um, I'll be at a commission for a little bit I'm having a medical surgery procedure done um, May 10th and then uh, I'm not sure where I will be after that um, so that was this is all in preparation for part of that as well but I'm super excited to get back to painting so I will as soon as possible I promise but for now it's just the steps leading up to that and kids getting the wind down at the end of the year exams in summer and I'm sure you can understand how that goes so there we go that desert turquoise is great this color palette is fabulous I did not choose it it was voted on from the group and the group did a great job choosing I really am enjoying this these choices okay so now the last color I have to use from that palette is my crisp blue and I'm debating whether or not I want to do one more ring of desert turquoise to kind of push it out a little bit farther the design um because i'm gonna do the crisp blue i'll we'll do some swipes just one-sided swipes i think maybe one side swipe one side dots why don't we just mix it up a little bit here but see this is the process that goes through my brain each step each ring that i get out to um you just kind of decide what you want your process to be so there's no need to rush Unless you have kids waking up from a nap like me, no. <laughs> That's what pause is for, right? It's like a good book. You can put it down. Painting's awesome. You can always come back to it. I have projects sitting around that I've, I've done while a long time ago. I started that, and it's still sitting here because I haven't decided. I want something around the edge, but I haven't decided what perfectly fits that stone. So it waits for me, and I think. I think I'm gonna go with the crisp blue. I'll start the swipes and we'll see where we go. So I'm still using my smaller dotting tool because I want these ones kind of thinner. And I am putting quite a bit on because it has a little bit of a distance to go here around this big dot. And see that ran out so I'm just gonna grab from up here a little more and force it into submission here go the way I want it to go paint there we go and I'm double dipping the tool so that I have enough paint to get the swipe around And a lot of you said you're still having trouble with these. I just think that it's it's just practice. Make sure your paint is fluid enough, and then it's it really it's just practice. And then the stone, these ones are really nice and flat. So dragging the paint along them is very fairly easy. Um, if you're using stones like the last stone I did was that piece of granite. Um, it was easier for me to use the brushes to do the swipes but only because the, the granite is very pitted and yes you could use something to fill the pits and stuff but I really just like to do the natural stone and it's a fun little challenge for me 
see what I can do and work with the natural stone. Okay, I think, because I do want to push the design out just a little bit farther by doing this, but <clears throat> pardon me. I'm going to use the crisp blue and I'm just going to dot down the side around. I just want to build up our flower petals just a little bit more. Oh, the last one didn't make a dot. There we go. If you guys are looking for these angled dotting tools, I'm, I'm selling packs of them when I get them in and make them. And then I also have singles. So I have a varied amount of the single, just one tool where most of them are about the one millimeter end in size, a little bit bigger than this one that I'm using now. Um, so if you wanted to try them out, they're in my Etsy shop. I do have them in there, the single ones now. And then I have more packs coming in of the five pack with the varied sizes. So as soon as I get those in, I didn't realize there was such a need for them, <coughs> but I, as soon as I get those in, they will come onto my Etsy. All right, so now that I bulked up that a little bit, I'm going to go back to the desert turquoise, which is what we did the big blue dot with. And I'm going to start a swipe off to the side here to kind of fill in and bulk up our petals a little. Like that. So it's like halfway down, just where your other swipe probably would start to get thinner. And that's where I'm starting the turquoise one. And then you have a nice flower mandala here started for you. So now the debate would be leaves. <laughs> um, this was as far as I was going to go for the palette or challenge, but the because the green is not part of that, and I want to use green for the leaves. So and this, I think maybe we'll do a little leaf here and one here. I'll do one here to start and we'll see. Maybe I can squeeze a little tiny one off to the side there. Let's see how this one looks first. All right, so I think for our stem, I'm going to go with a darker green at first and then I'll highlight it afterwards with a lighter green. All right, so we're gonna use Mermaid Tail. And we're going to use maybe one of the larger dotting tools, but not the largest. Maybe like a two millimeter. I'm gonna pick up fairly, Good amount here. If 
really a lot. I'm going to start way out here. I'm going to draw the stem of my leaf. And see it, it ran out, but I'm just dragging it, dragging it, dragging it from almost where it ran out into where I need it. And then I'm going to go back to using the smaller dotting tool. Sorry, I'm debating how fat I want the, the leaf to be. <laughs> so we'll go with these smaller tools. We'll start out here a little bit and just drag it in to the main stem. And then when I get to the bottom here, I'm going to flip the tool. We're going to do the swipes just like an undercut. I'll we'll shorten it up a little. An undercut. Undercut. And then maybe one more here. Like that. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. And I'm just kind of putting it on an angle because that's, I kind of have the leaf off to the side a little here. But you can play with that too, your angle and the direction that you want. And that's just the fun too of creating different designs. Just mixing and matching and trying different things. Flip the tool around, see what that does. Drag it longer, put more paint on it. Try it for other designs. Oop, I might have too much on that one. It was a little, I won't say booger. I did say booger, but I usually say booger. <laughs> and now I'm saying it too much. Just a glob of clot in the paint there. Put a little more here. And now this is where I flipped it. I'm going a little shorter and I'm not going to be able to fit three going the opposite direction. It's not a big deal. We'll just toss two in there. Just like that. And we have a fun leaf. So that leaf came out fairly large and hefty, <laughs> so it's actually making me think I want to just bulk up the flower maybe a little bit with another color. Um, 
debating using the yellow and just popping one more swipe here the opposite direction. And I think that's actually what I'm going to do. So I'm going back to that chick yellow. Okay, I'm switching to just a little bit larger of a tool. And I'm going to go the opposite direction here and start at the top. This is a multi-surface paint too, so sometimes they are a little thicker, but not impossible. I'm going to wait to do this one until the leaf is dry. And I wanted these ones a little bit thicker, so I'm going to put a little bit more paint on the bigger tool. Okay, so <clears throat> now that this is dry, I'm going to add the yellow one and I'm going to let it go over that part of the leaf because I want it to look like the leaf is a little behind our flower. I'm going to use something like this apple green. Maybe that is what I'll use. And this is one of the multi-surface and I'm going to highlight each little part of the leaf here. So I just want something small, one of the smallest dotting tools. Because you don't want to cover up too much, you just want to put little highlights on. Just throw a little bit of like depth and dimension on your leaf here. I'm just like towards the end where you started your dot, just give it a little bit on there so that you can still see a considerable amount of the darker green from behind. Does that make sense? And I'm just going to do that on every little section here. And this one, it's not going to go all the way because yeah, we have our yellow on top. Okay, and same with the other side.
So now you're at a point to, to decide if you want to do some top dotting, you know, more dots on top of the ones that you already have because it's dry enough. Um, I might do, let's see, maybe just a darker yellow in the center of our first yellows that we put down, just to add a little bit to that one. <coughs> not quite as dark as the orange that you have, you know. So this is just the primary yellow. From the Americana line. And then, you know, deciding what you want to do. If you want to top dot those with something, let's maybe do, why don't we do a nice little sea breeze. So it's kind of like a lightish turquoise green. And then it just kind of gives it a little pop there, background color. And then you have a nice little flower for your collection. Or to give to a friend. And this stone also too, you know, a lot of people always ask what to do with the stones when they're done, when they're painted. So you can put them on a stand, you can keep them flat. Some people make little collections to keep in bowls and decorative plates around the home, baskets, that type of thing. And this one, actually if I had planned the design differently, it might even stand on the one side, it does. <laughs> so some of them have nice flat sides that can stand up on their own. I have lots on my windowsill, so just to give you a few ideas of what you can do. So I hope you enjoyed dotting this fun little flower with me tonight on a lovely Santorini stone again from Kept Couriers. I'll leave some links in the description of the colors I used and where you can get things like the dotting tools and the paints and um, even a lot of people ask me too about this fun little turntable. It's actually a cookie decorating turntable. Um, so those are fun too. Some people use a Lazy Susan. That's helpful to just, especially with smaller projects, to just spin it because that way you can work on each section, have it in front of you. So if you're looking for more of my artwork, uh, it's for sale on Etsy. I have a shop, um, but also I'm on Instagram. I have an art page on Instagram and Facebook, so you can check me out there. And if you're looking for more of my videos and want to be notified when they come out, just click the subscribe button and uh, it will notify you every time I put up a new video. So, all right, I hope you are all doing well. And again, I thank you so much for your patience and the encouragement and all the awesome notes and comments you guys are sending me. You guys are the best. I, I just don't know any other way to say it. <laughs> and I really appreciate you. So thanks again and have a great night. Take care.